Well, so up until now, under Brazilian law, uh, candidates, individuals, are allowed to register for the elections. Uh, now, that does not necessarily mean that they're going to be able to run, and that's what the highest electoral court is deciding today. Is he going to be allowed to run? The, the, this all is based around a clean slate law that Brazil uh, voted into effect roughly eight years ago, which basically says that if you've been uh, convicted of corruption or other crimes, you cannot hold office for eight years. So that's what this all comes around to. That's what the Supreme Electoral Court is debating at this moment. Will Lula actually be able to, to, to run as, as a candidate in, in this year's presidential elections? And uh, he's found a surprising ally in the UN Human Rights Committee, which has ruled that he can't be disqualified while his appeals are ongoing. What more can you tell us about that? Well, that's essentially a recommendation for Brazil. Uh, and in fact, one of the first uh, Supreme Court ministers to speak about this just a couple of hours ago, that's what he repeated. He said, that's a recommendation. You know, we can take it. That's also what the government of Brazil has said, that that's a recommendation. It's not binding. Uh, and that's what they're going to take it as. And Lula da Silva's appearance on, on television and radio is also an issue, isn't it? Uh, I guess due to his ability to sway voters for his preferred candidate, even if he himself can't run. Absolutely. So we know that they recorded a bunch of kind of media hits right before he went to jail. Um, and this was what a lot of people thought was actually going to be discussed at the Supreme Electoral Court today. Uh, was about, you know, is he actually going to be able to be on television? It looks like from what the first Supreme Court minister has said that they're likely going to give. So it's in, in most cases, it's most likely that they're going to bar him from running the elections. We're going to find out in the coming hours. Uh, at that point, it, it sounds like they're going to give them roughly 10 days to switch out, move their vice presidential candidate, Fernando Haddad, up to the presidency. And at that point, they can actually start to campaign with images on television and whatnot. But up until now, uh, that's what they're finally going to decide today. And up until now, we, you know, we'll see what happens. And just finally, Michael, as we've been saying, De Silva continues to lead in opinion polls. Just how far out front is he? And, and why are Brazilians still uh, so enamored by this man? Well, so it's, it's an excellent question. You know, Brazilians... They love him. When he left office, he left with an 87 percent approval rating. The eight years that he, you know, uh, that he was in office, he really focused on this idea of eliminating poverty throughout the country, and he lifted millions out of poverty. So he is most praised kind of in the northeastern, the poorest sections of Brazil. Uh, also, about roughly half of the country does not believe that he uh, is is guilty of of uh, you know the. He's, what he was convicted of, accepting a beachside apartment from a company seeking government contracts. And they believe that it's, uh, it's basically a scam in order to keep him out of the election. So that's obviously why a major portion of the population is still way in favor of Lula. And he's roughly 10 to 15 percent in the polls, uh, depending on what the polls are. So he's still up there. If he was allowed to run, he would win.